So we are here in Ableton Live 7, and we are going to bring in our MIDI data from Harmony Navigator, our verse and our chorus. And if we, first thing we want to do is navigate to the desktop, and here's a little trick. If we click here, desktop, it'll take us there, and you'll see here's where we saved our verse and our chorus. And if we click and drag into the session view, you'll see it breaks apart the piano bass and pad. And we'll do the same for the chorus. So, let's um, rename our MIDI channels to correlate. So, piano, bass, and pad. Okay, good. Now, as you'll see, these two scenes here, one and two, when we click this arrow, we'll fire across the first uh, horizontal line. And when I hit two, it'll fire across the second horizontal line, triggering the verse and the chorus. So let's name the first one verse, and the second one chorus. Chorus. Okay, <laughs> good. Now, remember I told you I made a mistake when I was exporting the verse. When I had two options that I I didn't deselect, and here you can see them. The first one was giving us this lead-in of empty space, which we don't want. And the second thing I didn't um, check off is putting program changes uh, attached to the clips, which means if I, when I attach a virtual instrument to this channel, it's going to select the fifth uh, sound or preset. So we want to get rid of all this stuff. So click on the piano and fold, that just uh, makes this area only view um, notes that have uh, data on them. So select all and just drag them all to the one to fix, to get rid of the lead in that we put and do that for the base. Fold, select all, drag and get the loop right and for the pad, the same thing. And let's get rid of the program changes and just put them to none. None, piano, none. Okay, good. So now, if you'll notice the, the chorus that, that we um, exported, those are already set. There's no program changes and there's no lead in. So it's good to remember when you're using Harmony Navigator and exporting the data to deselect those two things because that is the default. Okay, so now let's add um, virtual instrument for the piano, bass, and pad. And I'm gonna use um, FabFilter's twin for everything. So I'm gonna drag um, an instance on each. So one for the piano, one for the bass, one for the pad, and then to get started, I'm going to um, just just go into the preset area and find something similar to a piano. It doesn't have to be a piano, but so when I play everything back, it'll be somewhere in the ballpark. Uh, so let's say um, for piano, keys, um, here, and a little organ. It's not a million miles away. Bass. Let's see, bass, let's try, oops, sorry, bass, something interesting here, dance. Okay, bass ace, why not? I don't know what these sound like, but, and pad, select the pad, and yes, we have pads, so great. And just pick the first one, and now, let's take a listen. Oh, actually, first, I want to point something out. I want to knock down all these faders to about, mm, I usually do about negative 12 dB. And the reason why I do this um, is because they will all sum heading this way to the master fader, and I like to keep the master at zero. And that, I think, is pretty important for sound quality when you're working with a 
digital inside the box in the digital realm. Okay, so we have everything set up. Let's fire off the verse and take a listen. And now let's click the chorus. Okay, so we're not a million miles away, but I can tell that the bass sound is definitely no good. So, two things. First of all, it's pitched too low, and that, that's pretty normal. I usually end up pitching up something. So let's go right into the MIDI effects, pitch, plus 12, and drop that right there. Oops. And I'm going to pick a different sound. Uh, let's see. And this time, let's take a listen while we play with the sound. Sounds pretty good. Into the chorus. Okay, we're starting to get somewhere. Now, one thing that I want to talk about is inside Harmony Navigator, when you're exporting accompaniments, um, it's important to realize that you didn't actually make those original patterns, so you want to customize this these sounds a little bit so it's not just blatantly like ripping things off. I mean you're already you've already picked the chords, you're already changing the sounds. I mean you're you're manipulating it quite a lot already, but let's go further. So on the bass, um, there's a lot of things you can do. I mean you can just edit the notes, you can there's tons of effects and, and different ways to rearrange MIDI. Um, but I'll just add an arpeggiator and let's take a listen. So that's already an improvement. And lastly, let's add uh, some some drums. So I have um, an impulse and a little 808 kit. That's uh, drag that there. And let's just do something very simple again. Knock down the fader. And if you click this little icon, you can hear things as you hit them. Command B takes us to the pencil. And let's see, um, yep. closed hi-hats, eighth notes, and copy that to the chorus also. And now let's listen. 